Is cardio important? Yes. Right. Endurance. Yes. But you can do walking. If you're like, yeah, I'm doing some strength training. I'm doing some mobility stuff. Great. Wonderful. What else should I do? Should I do some cardio? Go for a 20 minute walk every day. Go for a 30 minute walk every day. That is going to serve you just fine. Can you do a recovery walk? Yes. Hey there, welcome to the Female Health Solution Podcast, where we discuss women's health, hormones, and everything else in between. Join me as we dive into the tools that you need to live your healthiest life. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the Female Health Solution Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Beth Westy. Today, we're going to be talking about exercise for menopause. Now, I'm going to keep it specific to exercise, just talking about fitness, all that stuff. And when you're really in menopause, meaning it has been more than a year since you have had a cycle, had a period, Um, maybe you've had your hormones tested, maybe you've done a dodge test, and it's confirmed, no more estrogen, progesterone, none of that going on, you're not ovulating, okay, great, you are in menopause, you are in that final stage for your body, amazing, amazing. A lot of women get frustrated with this stage just because your body reacts completely differently. You are living in a new body now, and it's not a bad thing, but it's just helpful to understand what's different so that you can use that to your advantage. And here are some differences to take note of, especially when it comes to exercise. Um, A lot of things have, I don't want to say slowed down, going at a different pace than they were previously. Not that you can't do things to help speed them up or or go at the same pace they used to, like your digestive process, all that stuff. And I know we've talked about nutrition before for that. So if you have not looked into my book, The Female Menopause Solution, make sure you look at that book. Tons of info in there on that. When we really talk about exercise, the most important, the priority for the menopause body is muscle. Muscle, muscle, muscle. Muscle mass is so important for your immune system for strength, stability, right? To have this resource for your body, for your metabolism, your basal metabolic rate changes on how it functions. And one of the things that you need to sort of fight against that is muscle mass. Here's the thing for the female body to build and maintain lean muscle. It takes longer than the male body. And if you are a cycling female, right? You can use estrogen to your advantage, all of that stuff. Post menopause though, you don't have those same levels of estrogen. So you're really relying on your androgen levels, your testosterone, and women only have a small amount of testosterone, but it's a very important amount of testosterone and making sure that you can build and maintain lean muscle. A lot of times uh, for the male body, they're looking at gaining, you know, two pounds of muscle, um, you know, a month or so. Great. Women can gain, you know, previous to menopause, maybe a pound. Post-menopause, you're looking at at least half a pound. So besides lean muscle, focusing on that strength training, you don't have to start lifting heavy right away because it can feel really defeating if you haven't lifted weights ever in your life or done it in a really long time. It, It can be tough. You can start with body weight and just in your mind, give yourself a timeline of it. I'm going to do this for six months. I'm going to be consistent three times a week for six months at doing this strength training. It doesn't have to be a really long time. You don't have to work out for two hours either. Start with 30 minutes, 30 minutes of strength or some type of resistance training three times a week and go from there. Is it better to do it four times a week? Yes, but build up to that because the other thing besides working on strength training first The other thing that changes is your recovery rate. So if you're not giving yourself a full day in between to recover, it can be really difficult. Um, Besides strength training, which I could talk about for a while, but again, one of the easiest things to do to make you do, make sure you're doing it in a safe and effective way, work with a trainer, work with somebody who is going to give you a program to help you build, you know, day to day, week to week, month to month. And again, timeline has a realistic timeline for you. And it is helpful to measure, right? It is helpful to measure. Measuring yourself on the scale is not going to do it, but measuring yourself with the strength that you have, with what you can lift, with how much you can carry, 
one of my favorite things that I hear from women when this stuff starts to change for them is they'll say, oh my gosh, I could carry the laundry basket totally full all the way up the stairs without stopping. Whereas they would have to stop or, not, or, or carry it and it, they couldn't have the laundry basket full. Or they'll say, I carry two bags of groceries in now from the car at the same time instead of doing one bag. I had some gal, this was recently, this was so funny. She was like, yeah, normally um, to change our water, like they use a water jug or something in their house. However, like they, um, they have water jugs for their home water or whatever. And she goes, normally I have to have my husband do it and he does it, whatever, because I can't lift them. And she goes, nope, I brought it in. I went outside, I carried it all the way in and hooked it up myself. She's like, I did have to stop, but I was able to lift it even. And she's like, I could never even lift them before. That's a big deal to build that strength and to have that happen slowly over time. And to think that even though you're getting older, you're getting stronger. It doesn't matter that your age is actually advancing because you are in charge of your muscle tissue continuing to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So muscle tissue where it's at, that's the first thing to focus on. The next thing, recovery, making sure your body has time to repair. It is not helpful for the menopause body to all of a sudden say, I'm going to, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start doing strength training and work out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Give your body time to recover. Just like you're training it to build that muscle, you have to train your body to recover repair that muscle. If it's not used to doing it, it's not going to do a good job. And that's where injury comes in is if you're not giving your body enough time to recover. That's why I say like, and people ask like, how many days a week should I work out? Should I work out four to five days a week? And I'm like, it depends. Have you been working out three days a week already for at least three months? Then great up it to four days a week, right? If not, right? If you're going from zero, don't go from zero to a hundred, you know, that's where injuries happen. So start slow baby steps and really give yourself the time. Imagine if you set yourself a goal for a year from now that you want to have 10 more pounds of lean muscle, right? And 20 less pounds of adipose tissue or fat. That is absolutely possible, right? I, I mean, 10 pounds is a lot of muscle to gain in that amount of time, but you're still letting your body have that chance as long as you're getting it the right nutrient and doing the right strength training and giving it the proper repair rest time in between to start. The next thing is mobility, flexibility, blood flow changes in menopause, right? Um, some of the things, you know, with estrogen and progesterone, we're, we're talking about like vasodilation, blood flow, all of that stuff. It changes and it's different post-menopause. So it can be helpful to make sure you're really layering in some great mobility and flexibility things just to keep blood flow, lymph flow going, right? Make sure you're moving your lymphatic system, your, your lymphatic fluid. It's essential. Now, does this go along with recovery and everything else? Yes, it does. (laughs) But stretching, this is, I mean, can you just, oh, I take a yoga class twice a week. Great. Great. Right. Again, sometimes it's really helpful to join a gym that you can go to different classes. Take a strength class three times a week and a yoga class two to three times a week. There you go. The yoga class being a gentle and easy. If the yoga class is more intense, then it can count for your strength too, right? Or making sure you are weightlifting or strength training and then spending time stretching and spending time with mobility. Mobility is different than just stretching. It's making sure that you can do um, a deeper squat movement, an active range of motion movement without restriction, right? Flexibility Oh, I can touch my toes. Okay, great. But can you bend over and lift something at the same time while keeping your balance? Right? So strength, mobility, flexibility, recovery. Those are the most important things to start with. After you've got those down, after you've been doing that for three months, for six months, 
then if you wanted to layer in more activity or cardio or something, great, great. Is cardio important? Yes, right? Endurance, yes. But you can do walking. If you're like, yeah, I'm doing some strength training, I'm doing some mobility stuff, great, wonderful. What else should I do? Should I do some cardio? Go for a 20 minute walk every day. Go for a 30 minute walk every day. That is gonna serve you just fine. Can you do a recovery walk? Yes, yes. But if then after that, you're looking to really ramp up your physical fitness, then I would look at doing some different type of endurance, starting to jog or go for a run, go for, run for a couple of miles or um, do some interval training or something like that. Where, where I see women make the mistake is that they watch these things or see these things where, oh, do this exercise and burn fat and do this cardio and it burns fat and da, 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 da. And especially for the menopausal body, when you don't have the same muscle mass anymore and you don't have the hormones to help you build that muscle mass or for the recovery or for the blood flow and all that other stuff, you have to go about it in a completely different way. You can't just come at it from that same one angle again and again and again, because you're working with a different body. You live in a different meat suit that responds completely differently. So making sure you're getting that strength, recovery, mobility, and all of that, and giving yourself the time. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable at what you can achieve physically and what you can see and feel change. I have, I have had women, no joke. I have had women who are post-menopause that we've worked together, slowly worked into getting their activity up. I have this gal. Oh, she's so sweet. <sighs> she's retired. She's been retired for a while. Um, her, her son lives near her and a daughter-in-law and, and they've got a couple of young kids. Like I think they're three and five. Um, so the five-year-old I think is going to be in a preschool program now coming up this year. But before that, you know, when they were born, she was like, I'm retired. I want to help out as much as I can. She would take one or the other, but it was really hard for her to take both at once because the activity level of toddlers. And she was like, I get so tired. I have such a hard time. I'm so overweight. Da, 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 da. Well, we worked on her energy, her sleep. She started losing weight. And more than that, though, she started getting strength and stamina back. So even though she's like, yeah, I've lost about 25 pounds, which she's happy with. And she's like, I really want to keep losing more for sure. Okay. Right. But she's like, I feel so much stronger. She goes, I can have both of my grandkids for four to five hours at a time now at my house. And she's like, I'm pooped when they go. <laughs> but she's like, I can keep up with them. If one of them decides they want to get something out of a cupboard and they grab the kitchen chair and drag it over and da, 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 da. She's like, I can get to them. Whereas she goes last year. I wouldn't have been able to do that. I would have had to ask my husband to step in and help me. So she is so proud to be able to be incorporated in her grandkids' life like that. And she's like, these are the memories that I want to build. Not just being with them, but being active and not being restricted in my, in my physical endeavors. So she doesn't, you know, she goes to a, a water aerobics class for resistance. Um, and she, she has used a trainer in the past. I don't think she's currently working with the trainer, but I had her start with one because she was really unsure about herself in the gym and what to do, but she's kept up with her water aerobics and walks and all this stuff. And it's amazing. And the most important thing she gave herself was time, the time for her system to make that change. And she was so excited and she's like, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I was like, oh, I love this. And I was like, but. This is still the beginning. I said, imagine where you're going to be next year after a whole other year of building muscle and stamina and everything else. That's the thing I get really excited about for women. That's the thing that makes me so pumped because it's one thing to say, oh yeah, sure. You fit into some pants. Sure. But to be able to make a change so much so in your health that you're able to be there for your family and build memories for these kids that are going to last them a lifetime. And she can do it because she has the strength to do it because we started with the strength training first, made sure her body could handle it, made sure she could recover. We started twice a week with her because she really took a long time to recover. She had a lot of inflammation going on, but she gave herself the time. She was persistent. She didn't give up. So 
I love stories like that. And that's, so I just wanted to share that. But again, with menopause, just keep in mind, your system is different than what it used to be. It doesn't mean it's worse. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with it or whatever. It's just take the different angle on it and you'll be amazed at where you can end up, right? You can still achieve all your goals. So let me know if you have questions on this. Let me know if this is helpful um, or if there's something else that you feel I've, I need to expand on more, I would be more than happy to do so. So you can always leave a comment below. If you're not comfortable with that, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hear from women all over the world every single day. Um, and I love answering questions and just providing this education. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys and I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. If you would like more information, just head on over to drbethwesty.com for all the show notes and information from today's episode. And if you're looking for more community, more support, you can find and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and I would love to see you there.